think we are more than a minute over. We can get started. I'm going to paste the agenda link in the chat. Everyone can add their names to the attendees. And I see we have a new member, uh, Shreya. Welcome to the call. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Ali. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Shreya. I'm currently working as a system software engineer at uh, VMware, sorry, NVIDIA. I joined NVIDIA last month, and it's been an exciting journey so far. Uh, before joining NVIDIA, I worked as MTS1 at VMware, where I was part of uh, Sanju Mission Control. There, I had the opportunity to work with Kubernetes and Golang. And I graduated from Bitspilani in 2022 with a degree in computer science. Yeah. Awesome. Um, welcome, Srija. So in this call, we're uh, mostly talking about Cubeboard and SIG API related things. So um, good to have you here. <clears throat> okay, so I see welcome. you have, oh, um, I see you have uh, a topic for our discussion. Um, so we've been looking at uh, the API round trip um, tests, uh, discussing POCs and ideas. Uh, do you want to share uh, what we have been working on in, in that PR? Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, we have uh, numerous components and uh, series interacting with the uh, interacting through API calls. So having a reliable and stable APIs are necessary. Uh, so the uh, main focus of these tests uh, is to make sure that changes to the API do not uh, break the existing functionality and that the uh, system behaves as expected across upgrades and modifications. Uh, basically, these are very crucial for maintaining backward compatibility of APIs. So uh, uh, the test typical workflow is like uh, before running this uh, test, uh, we uh, set up various media types and uh, create a sample objects and then uh, serialize these sample objects into formats such as JSON and YAML. Then deserializes uh, the serialized data into objects and compare the original objects with the deserialized objects uh, to ensure they match. If any discrepancy is found, uh, so the test uh, the test fails logging the difference. And if the uh, environment variable is set, it updates the test data with the uh, API. I mean, with the new API fields. Yeah. So for now. Uh, the, so the test data directory contains the current version test data under head. Yeah, and uh, uh, and we are maintaining n minus three previous versions of test data, and we uh, check the I mean we check the backward compatibility with those uh, previous releases. Yeah. So if any uh, new I mean if uh, Qbert cuts a new release. We update, I mean, uh, you work, that's a new release. Uh, um, I mean, uh, the current files will be copied to the release version and the previous most uh, directory will be removed so that we maintain the, uh, we maintain the N minus three versions uh, compatibility. Yeah. And the construct.go has the uh, has the logic for creating uh, the objects. Uh, yeah. 
yeah and uh, tests are present in compatibility.go uh, there is a current version test and also the we basically uh, iterate through the uh, each gvk and uh, run the current version test and also we uh, iterate through all the previous uh, version directories and run uh, previous version tests Yeah. Um, Shrija, do you have an example where a backward compatibility break was caught by this test? Uh, yeah. Do you want me to present? Uh, yeah, you can try sharing your screen. I'm not seeing any screen yet. Hey, this is Fabian. Hey, Fabian. Hey, Lei. I I was a little bit late. Was did we do a quick introductional round? Yes, we did. Uh, most of us on this call know each other. Uh, we missed introducing you, and uh, I think Sija went ahead with her introduction. Uh, while she just sets up the screen, you can um, do a quick introduction if you want to. Yeah, so I'm Fabian Dodge, working at Reddit on Qbert for a while. And um, yeah, I was just wondering about, because I know ULA, I know Edward, I was just wondering about 3 Ja and Kranti, and apologies for not pronouncing it correctly, possibly. I think the other one might be uh, Mart. Uh, at least that's, I, I mean, I'm not sure, but uh, it might be, uh, haven't seen them speak up in this call. Oh. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> I I believe we have a solution for uh, making sure that the meetings are bought free from next week, so. Okay, awesome. I, I think I can see your screen, Shida. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, there is this new API field which was added uh, in one of the latest PRs. Uh, the uh, uh, this field uh, uh, will be using this uh, to run our test, uh, and we can uh, check if there is any new field was added uh, by running the tests against the head direct head directory head test so yeah so when uh, decoding uh, and comparing the objects uh, from json and yaml uh, so failure uh, if a failure is uh, triggered it details with error output uh, so the error specified the uh, these errors specify the differences found during the comparison. Uh, so since uh, this was a new API field which was added, uh, this field was uh, added. Uh, I mean, it shows the difference that this field should be present in our uh, current uh, test data. So uh, we can take a call here. Like if the difference is expected, uh, we can rerun this uh, test with the environment variable set to true and run uh, rerun this test so now uh, this uh, i mean the new api field will get updated in uh, to this uh, test data and we can also check if this is compatible or not with the previous versions by running uh, these tests for the previous release versions. Uh, now I'm checking it with release 1.0. Uh, so all the tests have passed. Uh, this is because uh, the uh, the API field which was added was uh, optional. So for our test purpose, if we, yeah, for our test 
purpose i made it as a compulsory so if we run this test again so now we'll be uh, seeing the field i mean seeing the error output so uh, as in this case a non pointer field was added uh, it caused this test to fail and the output includes the unexpected fields uh, by adding a zero value to that field so we can verify that uh, if this difference is expected or not and take an action accordingly so if the, um, if it is expected we can update the uh, compatibility data for this fail test with the environment variable set to true and running this test again so this time uh, uh, it creates a expected data file uh with after round trip dot json extension to the file name and uh it is placed next to the serialized data from the previous release and this uh contains the the uh new api field which was added and it was set to null value if we run this test again now the test would pass so uh, this helps in the reviewers uh, if there is any backward compatibility with the change with the changes uh, that have been made through the pr yeah yeah this is amazing so um shida the idea is that if we have if we do have backward compat incompatible change uh the yeah. round trip dot json will be an indication that the reviewers yeah. need to play, pay close attention right yeah yeah okay. <clears throat> yeah um yeah so i've been working with rita on these um on work on you know reviewing these tests and it looks like these are um, so first thing, this is taken from uh, Kubernetes API uh, fuzzer test, and Kubernetes already follows this process uh, for for a significant amount of releases, and they seem to have made it work in terms of not introducing backward incompatible changes. So um, this was just our way of trying to solve that problem. The idea is that we'll take three APIs, virtual machine instance, virtual machine, and kubeword, um, kubeword, kubeword CR, and try try using this test in in those three APIs. Like to pause here. Do folks have questions on on this? I I have one question. Um... Yeah. So maybe one request and one question. One the first request is it will be great to have like a tutorial that gives uh, gives us uh, what needs to be done, what is the workflow to check to use this to in order to check uh, API changes that we are doing. So that's like the first. I don't know if maybe it's already documented because I didn't review this PR. If it's missing, then it will be really great to have something like that. Then I can just follow it and do a change to the API and just work through this. And this is the request. And the question is, I know Kubernetes is, uh, is also taking care of uh, downgrades. Like if, if you downgrade now, then it will uh, also validate it. it is fine. But we are not doing downgrades. Like we don't need to take care of that part. So the question is, uh, is this check also tries to to make it safe to downgrade, or is it is it is it only for the for upgrades? I hope you understand what I try yeah. to ask. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> so the way this works is. We will take the, well, actually we'll have to get back to you on the question. Uh, I'm, we are checking for a round tripping here. And I understand that when you, when we do a full round trip, it will be from the later version to the older version. 
So that will be an upgrade test. Uh, however, I'm not sure what scenarios will are considered during downgrade. So we'll have to do some brainstorming and get back. Yeah, it's, it's like, I think the consideration here is that we sh at the moment, we should check that downgrades are not considered, I mean, it's only a warning maybe, but not a, it should not block. Yeah. If it's if it's even checked, I don't know. Yeah, that that makes sense. I think we will take it as one of the open questions uh, to make sure that if the test is checking for downgrades, we can probably reduce that burden um, on on Kubert developers. Uh, regarding the first request, um, Shreda, I, I believe you already have some documentation. Can you walk yeah. through that? Yeah, there is already a documentation uh, for each release and how to test for a particular version and for a particular uh, GVK. And we are also trying to integrate, uh, we are also trying to uh, make, uh, I mean, uh, in, uh, make changes in make file so that uh, uh, this will be, I mean, we can try the make commands and run this test. Yeah, and also we have a reviewer's guide. Uh, this helps, uh, for, uh, this is specifically for the reviewer, like what to check and uh, what, uh, what to check basically, yeah. Okay, thank you. So I guess I'll, I'll review it and I'll try it out. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Shita, I think we do have some open questions for this PR to go through, right? Um, yeah. uh, one of the one of the things that we have been trying and we might need help from the community. I don't know if folks here have some guidance. Is that when we try to run that make command, it is failing because of some depth, depth dependency issue. So we'll need some help to figure that out. And the other part of this is um, we'll, we want the entire thing to be wired up in CI CD. So um, ideally, it would be nice to you know invoke this test on every PR. That will give us full benefits of of the uh, automation we have. Yeah. Um, yeah okay. If, if you if it if everything works out, then yes, it, it's not a problem. I think right. It's usually, what happens is that uh, it makes sense to have a target and make sure that everyone uh, plays with it a little bit to see that it's working and to get some feedback. And you, in parallel or maybe a few weeks later, you can add it as a, as a job. So it will run without uh, enforcement. And mm -hmm. after, a, let's say after a, a few, let's say a quarter or something like that, that you or even less, that you see that it, everything is passing there most of the time. And there is no problem, then it can be required. Also. Okay. It depends, it depends how you. Yeah, want we to can do it. that. So what we can do is for this release, we can make the job as uh, uh, optional, and then one release later, if things go well, we can make that uh, required and enforcing moving forward. I think that sounds like a good idea.
Hello. Hello, I hope everything is well. I can hear loud and clear. Oh, sorry. I was speaking on mute. That's great. <laughs> uh, thanks for getting it. Um, Everyone agreed. Uh, what was the last thing that you guys heard? Yeah, I think you, you didn't move to after you summarized it on the document. I don't think we heard anything else. Oh, okay. All right. So the first thing I did was ask uh, Srija. Uh, Srija, did you have any other questions for the previous topic, for this topic? Yeah. So that dependency issue, uh, you said you will be uh, asking it here, right? You know, what I was saying is that um, I think that one needs some async uh, discussion. We can take this to uh, Kubeword Dev uh, Slack channel or maybe mailing list and reach out to folks. We can find people there who can help out us, help us out on that issue. Okay, yeah. I don't have any questions other than that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, for the CI, I think what we agreed was. Okay. So uh, moving on to the next topic. Um, I was wondering if we can brainstorm ideas uh, for a talk that is related to all the work uh, that has been done in this uh, SIG. Uh, one idea I had was that we can um, we can probably uh, submit a SIG API updates uh, call, uh, sorry, updates talk, and that will summarize all the, uh, a couple of, major work items that have gone through uh, this uh, SIG, uh, some of the review work that we have done and, and you know, some kind of uh, an overview of what, what kind of work can this uh, SIG help out with. So, I, I want to stop there. I want to get people's thought here. Um, do we have other um, ideas for for a talk that can um, that we can submit from this sig? Absolutely, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's hear it. Um, first, I think you must have a session, right? And I, I think. Why was this group established? What are the problems we want to solve? What are the problems we are seeing? What is your mission? Do you have a mission document? Yes, uh, we don't have it yet, but we have agreed to a charter. Uh, it's summarized in this document. Um, <clears throat> uh, and you don't need yeah. to tell it to me, but oh, they're perfect. Yeah. yeah. I think something that, that I would add, like, to be honest, I think that should be like, if you ask me, like a scope of the session should be introduced things, ZIG API, right? And doing what you like. And I would be, I'm not sure if we like, I'm not sure if we want to call it introducing ZIG API because it could like um, include that, uh, like it's it's there, it's a fact, right? Maybe we want to frame it as like framing SIG API, by the way, right? And then defining what is your mission and why the heck do we need it, right? What do we want to do? Um, I think that would be great, right? Simply to steer, like, I think we need to create awareness for the problems you are solving. And uh, maybe that is something you want to lead with. And then eventually, like, lead up to your charter, what you have. But that is like, yeah, framing SIG API. Why is this group established? Um, for you know awareness for the problems that are being solved or that you had i mean it started right because there were problems and eventually end up with the charter for that thing what i'm unsure about is 
how we proceed from here. Like um, if, if it should be a proposal, right, to propose the API or if this group wants to say, let's keep it in this form, let's gain some more experience before we propose it. I think that's something that that um, might require some thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we already had a proposal for um, for establishing this SIG. Uh, one of the biggest concern that I heard from that was that the the work that is required for this seg to go through it might be bigger than the um you know hence we we hands we have in the group to to take it forward so that is why when we are trying to move focus towards this automation hopefully having automation like this um if in the future if we can make that enforcing will you know will help catch and filter things and issues um that don't require human intervention right and and then the next step is just solving for those issues i think it can reduce some some burden but yeah i i agree i think now that we have been gaining experience here we might have to revive that uh, proposal and and hopefully this if a session like this can have a good uh, discussion slash feedback, then th th that would be the path to to revive that proposal. And perfect. I like that focus on automation. And one ask, be conservative about letting members in. I think membership in Zig API should be conservative, right? And uh, it's, um, as, as you speak about automation and enforcing like, you know, as it's, like, I hope that humans are not in this. I mean, humans obviously needed to establish standards and to define them, but automation to enforce them. And I would keep it like, it should be merit-driven, right? If you turn up like for a couple of months or so, then you're willing to join the group. But I fear that if we propose the API, that there will be 20 hands up in the air to ask, let us join, but none of them will ever join. So um, I will support you, let's put it that way. If you say, right, we, we base this on merit and Edward, please also think about it, how we can frame it or phrase it, right? To base it on merit and we don't need to call it out, but I think it's important if this group knows it by itself, right? How do you want to accept new, new approvers effectively to your group? I think it needs to come from merit to avoid that it's like fast moving and people just drive by to, to push their agenda and then leave again. Yeah. yeah, those are great points, yeah, makes sense. So really cool. Oh yeah, Eddie. No, I just want to say that from a practic practical point of view, I think the defining the charter could be the first priority because then it's the charter usually uh, expresses the motivation and what are the areas that we want to cover, but it doesn't express how. So at least it gives like a some general perspective of what's going on and then and then we can go in and uh, write maybe proposal of how to enforce it one of them for example is this uh, this automation for uh, checking the api and stuff like that so, but yeah. we could start with something because if, if we i i have a feeling that we will wait to make it uh, perfect if we will wait another year so so we should you start with that. something and believe yeah. even yeah, yes exactly so we and should you know start, start with something even the, if the charter, if if in the charter there is there are points that are uh, there are disagreements of some of the things we can remove them and start with with more first you know it right perfect is the enemy of uh, like perfect is the enemy of good right i was about to say perfect is the enemy of bad um what I want to say is like, you know what, if you ask me, I think we should start with few policies and rather focus on the automation point, right? Because if you start with human enforcement, then you will always get into the debate, right? And so you will waste, waste your, I would call it waste, waste your time on these reviews debating over and over again. So I'd rather see how can we have automation in the first place and maybe just like a small enforcement, right? Because then it's much easier to increase that over time in a much more scalable way, right? 
because you need to have that discussion only once to enable a new rule, but you don't need to have that discussion on every PR. Usually there will be exceptions, but okay. um, yeah. But I I'd love to help you. Like, like if you need any support, like for that session as well, or grooming or so. Like, oh yeah, we need to close, right? We need to submit it by I think the end of this week or Sunday, something like this. Yeah. The abstract. Yeah. I think May 20 is the deadline. Okay. If you share a doc, right, I think then I can help to to write it up. Although I would not yeah. be a speaker, but I think you can speak well enough, all of you. Yeah. I was okay. encouraging okay. Edward to join me in speaking. Oh. And you uh, did very well in convincing him. I know that he will be a good speaker, right, Eddie? <laughs> yes, if, I, if I'll share with you, with everyone who is encouraging me to send a, send, send a proposal here, is oh, you will be surprised. But uh, we, I guess we can we can start we can try and uh, format it at least what what we want to show and to talk about, and then we can. Maybe do a, a joint effort to propose to to present yes. it. Yes, I have some to, ideas. Right. Yes, yes. So what I was thinking is that one of the big uh, things that came from discussions here in this call is your um, feature flag uh, proposal, and I think we should start with with all of the uh, ideas that were um, mentioned earlier. And then end with with probably that proposal that here is one artifact that came from from that group and this is how it will affect developers and this is what um, we would gain out of that. I, I think those are the ideas I have, but let me take an action item to put this in a doc and share it with you guys. Um, get some feedback. I think that will be um, the a, a good way to take it forward. Awesome. Thanks, Alain. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, a disconnected question. Srija, may I ask um, how come you're joining us? Good luck finding the unmute button, possibly. Uh, I've gone for lunch. Uh, I, can, I can answer on her behalf. Ah. I'm not sure if she's around. Uh, basically, Srija is joining our team, and ah. this is one of their first tasks um, that was assigned. Um, joining we needed your some team help. On, on yes, the in, okay. in NVIDIA side, yeah. So she'll be working with um, Cubeboard and, and other things as a, you know, a nature of our team is, is to work on those things anyway. So, uh, one of the first things was to help out with this. Perfect. Kudos. Thank you. That's great. That's really helpful, really. I mean, yeah, it's really helpful to see that there's more eyes on this area. Great. Was uh, the other attendee from a few minutes ago also from NVIDIA or is he, she from somewhere else? No, I'm not sure if it was a real person. Ah, okay. Oh yeah, you likely a work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. I've not seen that many bots on Zoom calls, but not unlikely. Okay. All right. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I think those are the two things I had on the agenda. Uh, I think I should put this as part of the checklist here. Uh, in a second. yeah, I we already have the the charter template um, down there. Just need to um, put it in a PR on the community page. So I'll try to take that next. Uh, okay. Do folks have other things that we need to talk about here? There are the, the the list above. I don't know if yeah. there anyone has it. There is a list above it that we should go over the every each one. I think it's stuff that were collected. And we 
for sure we'll, we we will not have time to go over all of them but maybe we can assign homework for the next meeting yeah sure unless fabian has something uh, specific now no no nothing specific i think first great to see that that feature gate work landed so plus one on including that implementation actually i wondered if it would merit like a presentation by itself at least you want to put together a slide deck eddy that we can share on the Kubernetes dev mailing list simply to make it easier for developers to understand what it is about right um yeah but plus one of having like a brief section we can go over the flow the flow that uh... yeah I guess the flow is the most important thing to have, like even a 15 minutes introduction and tell them this is the expected flow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But nothing specific. Good to see. Good to see this discussion simply happening. I think that's what I was. Yeah. I wanted to get positive energy, so join this call. We are here with strong energy. Oh, I know you are. Maybe you had a good lunch, so the energy has doubled. No, I didn't have any lunch today. It's like, uh, mm. yeah, no time to for lunch. Um, the, the what I wanted to say, except there are the, these things that we can go over now, uh, and there there were, I guess, two important important to uh, things that happened. One of them is that uh, eventually the slurp, uh, deprecation, discontinuation, removal got in. Uh, but we can also learn uh, learn about this as a after aftermath, but we can also go if, if someone finds like something really blocker, we can go back. Uh, and there is a continuation to this effort. This one like uh, was really a, a big exception, this slip thing, but it was an easy exception because no one really uses it in practice. The, but there are also deprecations now suggested for for other things that were feature gated, like uh, the network bindings for MacVitup and soon passed. So the MacVitup is posted and there is a, and, it will be followed by by another one. So that's that's the things that I was involved in a little bit. So just be aware, uh, and we can try to check what we learn from the slurp one, for example, and and the next one. If we did mistakes or we what what issues we found and so on. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't manage to add that one. Thank you. Yeah, I think I found the Mac V that one. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, this was the one you were talking about, right? Which went in. Okay. Uh, this is the slip one. No, what? Which one is this? Uh, yeah, this, this yeah, this is. Plan. This is merged already. Yeah. Okay. It took only uh, a year, so. Uh, are you? Uh, am I more audible now? Oh, it took one year. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> I heard something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. It was like it's a very old one, with a lot of steps and yeah. Okay, yeah, I think we should do a discussion regarding this um, soon. Do you want to walk through this PR? Um, or maybe we can go through this PR async and then uh, come back with questions if if we have any for you. Yeah, I thought that maybe we should just present the, the, top, the topics here and then, then uh, let people uh, go through them, ask questions, and come yeah. back in a week and uh, and try to answer them or uh, or discuss it. Yeah, 
Sounds something good. like that because we have several things here. That, but if you want uh, some intro, we can do that as well next week. Depends what you want. Yeah, I think a brief intro would help to set context um, when if someone is trying to go through this PR, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, I, yeah, the text here is supposed to give the, a brief, a brief uh, uh, introduction. It it contains the introduction, what is clear, and it uh, gives the alternative. So if someone reads this description, I think they should be okay. But okay, uh, sounds good then. If you yeah, if you then... think it's not, then let's schedule uh, next time. Uh, we'll give the introduction. No problem. Yeah, definitely. Okay, all right. Um, there were a couple of design documents in our checklist as well. Um, <clears throat> one is this customized multis annotation, and the other was this IPAM uh, networks. Yeah. Unfortunately, I did not get time to go through this. Um, e is this going to be needed relatively soon or something to just keep an eye on? I was just wondering on the timeline because I do see there are a um, lot of things on my plate that, that I need to take care of um, relatively soon this week. I think this one came from a, from a community member that wanted to to utilize more features from the Multus uh, uh, Meta CNI. Um, like, and he wanted to use more options there. And the Kubert only has very only a small portion of it. So he wanted to use more. Uh, and then he started by adding code to Kubert itself. And then I think I recommended to to use some uh, to use it as a as a webhook like to deploy an, an additional uh, webhook. So it will do the extra things that he he wants, but I think mm -hmm. this is where the this uh, design proposal is looking looking at. Um, I I don't remember. I I looked last time. I think it was like two one month or two months ago that I looked at it. So, I don't, but I didn't okay. see him uh, answering it. I think I think he didn't answer. Okay. Yeah. Then I think we can. But it is pretty. No, I just wanted to say that this one is. I like the. I like the design. The sense that it requires very minimum uh, uh, work in covert and changes in covert and defers all the logic to some third-party addition that can be added. That's like I prefer this approach over adding all all possible features in the covert core. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, if you, if you have time, you could go over it. It's not. I don't think it's. Uh, I didn't see him pushing too hard on it, but maybe I don't know how how critical it is. Then. Okay. Uh is does this follow the same? Well, this does not have a design doc. It has. It has. I think. Okay. This is a it, this one requires reading. Uh, it's not uh, not that simple. The the only thing that I can say something about this one is that it is um, it doesn't have an uh, user facing API in the sense that uh, you don't need to do something special in in one of the covert APIs. Um, so it, it, but it uses, it, it changes some of the behavior behind the scene. Uh, I don't know if it changes the behavior. It adds, it adds functionality by creating all the, all the other CRs and, and so on. But it, it does not have, uh, implication on the API that the users are seeing in this sense. It is worth, uh, looking at. Okay. And uh, yeah. what I wanted to I wanted it to be discussed here in the sense to check that it doesn't have any anything uh, 
you know, problematic or uh, you don't see any issues with it. That's it. Yeah, makes sense. I think this one will be the first thing we take on. Uh, and then we can have that in the magnet. And this is the same thing, right? Uh, Okay. The deprecations one are interesting in the sense that uh, it's like uh, they are they are like uh, you we could build from from them we can learn from them and build from them like a uh, recommendation and instruction of how to do the deprecation in practice like if you want to deprecate a, a feature that is not graduated yet and you it it didn't reach uh, it it is either in alpha or in beta and we want to take them out. Where do we need to, what we need to look at, uh, to consider and so on. And also, this is also true for things that were already GA, that's the slip case. But anyway, this is like, uh, we can have learning from this one and try to, to see how it, how it works out. And how can we yeah. write something to recommend how to do it? Yeah, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, should definitely document and take learnings from, from that deprecation. Okay. Yeah, I think we can take this that as um, some things to come back with next week. Okay. All right. Yeah, then I'll uh, work on that uh, proposal for the keyword summit talk and send it your way and yeah we can can call it ends today okay great all right uh thanks rija for uh, presenting um, Thank thanks you very folks much. we'll see you next week bye 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 bye